the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets are going on the road to Athens, Georgia, to face off against the Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia is a 19-point favorite at home. Over-under is set at 54-and-a-half in this one. Georgia has dominated this series as of late. Uh, Georgia has not lost since Kirby Smart's first season at Georgia. Last year was a game that uh, kind of turned some heads a little bit. Uh, it was a little bit closer than what I think a lot of Georgia fans would have wanted last year in Atlanta. And here we go again with some clean, old-fashioned hate. Uh, Coach Key has already been talking about this in the, this game in the media, the clean, old-fashioned hate, saying that this rivalry is alive and well that Georgia Tech will come in and fight. And I expect nothing less. This game will be played on Friday night. Um, and it, look, I think that Georgia Tech has a little bit of an advantage right there, Mason, in the fact that they played this past Friday night. And so now they've had a whole week to get ready, whereas Georgia just played on Saturday. I wouldn't be surprised if Georgia's defense last week wasn't working on this Georgia Tech offense. I'll just be honest with you. Because it, it sure didn't look like Georgia did anything to prepare for UMass. Um, Georgia, Georgia went out on the field this past week against UMass and literally said, all right, punch me. And UMass was like, what? And he's like, no, punch me as hard as you can right now. And UMass did. And, and Georgia took a step back, and then they, they figured it out. They started bobbing and weaving, and they figured it out, and they scored a million points. And uh, UMass was never going to be good enough to really push Georgia to the limit anyway. And Georgia knew that. So Georgia Tech, as everybody knows, is coming off of a win against Miami. It really caught everybody's attention. Georgia Tech dominated the time of possession in that football game, dominated on third down. Um, defensively, it was a big surprise because defensively, this Georgia Tech squad has really just not been that great this year, Mason. Most of their rankings are... 50s and 60s and 70s throughout, you know, uh, national rankings defensively. Um, they used their offense to play defense against Miami, and that's how they won that football game. And not to mention Miami just couldn't convert on third downs, and it, it put their offense in a tough situation, and their defense was not good enough to be able to get Georgia Tech's offense off of the field, even though they had a hurt quarterback. Uh, Haynes King was kind of in and out of the game. Uh, your backup was able to come in and do some nice things. Um, so in this matchup, I'm looking at Georgia's defense, and I'm thinking the number one thing that you got to do if you're Georgia's defense is you're, you're going to have to be able to uh, – you're going to have to be able to get out there and stop the run, right? Um, th this Georgia Tech rush offense, 180 yards a game. That's 44th in the country. Um, Georgia against the run has been typically pretty good this year. This last weekend, like I said, was not very good. Um, but Georgia against the run uh, this season, 120, 125 yards basically uh, rounded up their yards per game rushing allowed. That's 38th in the country. You can't allow Georgia Tech to possess the ball to a victory here. That's the biggest thing for Georgia. And um, I, I think Georgia is going to be able to, to – uh, have success getting stops against this Georgia Tech offense. I don't think by any means it's a high-flying offense. One of the biggest things, and I've talked about it already this season, one of the biggest things last year in this Georgia-Georgia Tech game that I think is different about this year is Georgia's defensive line. We've seen a major improvement in the Georgia defensive line this year versus what we saw last year. We, we saw Georgia's defensive line get pushed around at times last year, and, and I just haven't seen that, Mason. I feel like these guys are – a step better than what they were last year. You know, Ingram Dawkins is somebody that really comes to mind. That's I feel like he's made some improvements, um, and, and it's really, really helped this team out a lot. Um, and, and Georgia continues to get healthier, it seems, as the season goes on at that position. So I don't think that Georgia Tech is going to have the ability in this game to be able to possess the football and limit Georgia's possessions like they would like to. Brent Key is an ex-offensive lineman. His expertise is obviously offensive line. Georgia is going to see a good offensive line when they go face off against Georgia Tech uh, in Athens this, this Friday night. Um, th th that's the, the best unit, I feel like, on the field for this Georgia Tech uh, team uh, in general uh, across, the, across the team. Um, 
if you really look at it, Mason, uh, time of possession, Georgia's actually better at possessing the football than Georgia Tech has been this season, believe it or not. Um, Georgia averages uh, possessing the ball for over 30 minutes a game. Uh, Georgia Tech, uh, just a, about a minute less per game, 58th in the country for Georgia Tech, 49th in the country for Georgia. I, I just don't see the edges, Mason. It, it, we, we look at Georgia's offense, and they're, they're going to have a very, very clear advantage as far as in the passing game. Georgia's top 10 passing game in the country, even with all the drops, even with all the interceptions and things like that that everybody wants to talk about. Carson Beck ain't him, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's all well and good. Georgia, when's the last time that you watched Georgia and they were a one-man wrecking crew? Carson Beck was never the one-man wrecking crew. Georgia is a team. They are a conglomerate. And... uh it's it's easier said than done to be able to to beat the dogs in this situation. I think there's a lot to play for. I think Georgia, if they would have played Georgia Tech last week, maybe they would have had a little bit more of a letdown after that Tennessee victory. Um, I don't I don't see a letdown coming here. As far as covering the spread, I could see it being closer than 19, though. Um, I could see Georgia winning this game, you know, I don't 34, 17, or or um you know, something like that. I, I I don't necessarily think that this one's going to be 20. The actual line that I got earlier today was 20 and a half. So I'm not sure if there's been line movement or or what. Mason, what are your thoughts on this game? I think Georgia's got a clear advantage offensively in the passing game. Uh, I think that uh, Georgia Tech has got a clear advantage defensively uh, being able to stop the run in this game. And I think Georgia is going to come prepared I think it'll probably be pretty close in the first half, but I think Georgia runs away with this thing in the second half. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. Um, look, this is a Georgia Tech team that has gotten a lot better defensively um, this year versus last year. Last year, if, if they played any type of defense, I mean, um, they're in a much better position. And, and um, it, it was kind of a successful year last year for Brent Key and company also beat Miami last year. Uh, so I, I think that this is a team that's gotten a lot better at tackling. I think that was a big issue for them um, and, and kind of just the fundamentals of defense. Uh, but then also uh, as an offense, we've, we've seen under Brent Key um, just a much more uh, modern style of offense that Georgia tech wasn't doing under Paul Johnson. Um, and, and, you know, with, with Haynes King, I, I've, I've really liked him all year, but all of a sudden he's kind of out. Um, they're, they're going with the true freshman Aaron Philo, uh, right now. And, um, I'm, 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 I'm kind of wondering what's going on there. I know he's been hurt and been trying to come back, but he's, he's playing, but, uh, but not meaningful snaps or, or not as much, I guess. No, I should say not meaningful snaps, but in comparison to Philo, it seems like that's that's kind of who they're wanting to go with right now. Um, but I've been impressed with both quarterbacks. Philo's looked pretty good uh, given you know his inexperience and all. I, I think that he's a fine quarterback. Um, having Jamal Haynes back last week, I think that was that was big for them uh, to get him back in and get him going. He he went out in that Miami game and um, I wasn't sure if he was going to play last week and uh, but, but it seems like he's, he's fully healthy and, and ready to roll. Um, that's a huge addition for, for their offense uh, for sure. Uh, but then you look at just like general tr trends between these, uh, between these two teams, um, Georgia tech defensively, they're, they're not great uh, in the passing game. They're, they're kind of middle of the pack. Uh, but they are really good at stopping the run. Uh, 30, 35th in the country, which is, in in my opinion, that's pretty good for uh, for Georgia Tech. But 35th in the country, giving up 121 yards per game. Um, and uh, 44th in total defense in the country. So much better than they were a year ago, where I think they were in the 80s or 90s uh, overall, maybe even worse than that. Um, so this is a, a much improved unit. But on the passing side of the, uh, of, of the defense that they have been a little bit more vulnerable. Um, they are uh, 69th in the country, giving up 200 and almost 220 yards uh, per game through the air. And that's where I think Georgia is going to uh, have a lot of success on the offensive side of the football. 
Georgia ranks 10th in the country in passing yards per game at 297. Uh, this is a, a much different offense than we've seen from Georgia in, in, in recent memory um, or ever, really. Um, this is a, a pass-centric offense. They're still banged up in, in the running back room. I don't, I don't necessarily think that Georgia feels a need to get uh, Trevor Etienne involved, to get Branson Robinson involved. I did see that Branson Robinson was stressed out in that football game last week. Um, so he, he was, he was ready to go. Um, this, this shouldn't be uh, an, an area where, uh, or a game where, where Dylan Bell needs to come back early. Um, I, I, I think that Georgia is, is banged up, but I, I feel like even with the injuries, they should be able to win this football game. I'm, I'm with you. I think it's going to be closer than 19. I think it's going to look more like a um, kind of like a gritty, gritty ten point win. Maybe uh, thirty four twenty four is kind of kind of where I'm at with this one. Uh, I think that this offense is going to score, but uh, but the defense has been a little bit prone to giving up some some yards and some some touchdowns. So um, I'm I'm going to go with thirty four twenty four as my pick for this game, and. Uh, and Georgia will handle business. And and also, part of my reasoning for that, too, I didn't mention this, but Georgia's now got an SEC championship game to, to focus on, right? They didn't have that before. Um, Tech doesn't have that. They're going to be – this is this is their last game for several weeks. Uh, so I, I, I think you're going to see a little bit more um, want from from the Georgia Tech team. And um, and Georgia is going to be looking to just get out of this of this uh, game with a win, uh, without any more players getting injured. And I think you see a little bit more of a conservative game plan from the dogs.